Well, good morning. I wasn't expecting to make a video this early this morning, as you can probably tell by my damp hair, but I woke up to the news that Nikon have released version two of the firmware for the Nikon Z8, and it's a big one. It includes an awful lot of features that, well, in fact, all the features that I can tell, I don't know if there are any changes. I'd have to compare them directly from the Z9 version four and 4.10 firmware updates from October. So that includes things like the auto capture shooting, which is very interesting feature that I barely use because frankly, uh, I don't have a lot of use for leaving an extremely expensive camera sat outside by itself. But it's there anyway, if you're into that sort of thing, fantastic. It's now in the Z8, which is a really, really nice update, but it more importantly includes the birds AF subject detection. I've done a video on that on the Z9 up here. If you're interested, it is slightly different and those differences are kind of curious. So go and check that out if you want a little bit more information, at least from my experiences on the Z9. But perhaps more interestingly, there's a couple of features, well, the ones that I've seen so far, uh, that have come from the Nikon ZF. And Nikon used the ZF as a bit of a test bed for some new technology. I don't believe that they've ported over the new uh, there was a new option for vibration reduction or image stabilization on the ZF, which allowed you to sort of customize the point around which it was stabilized, which is very interesting. I don't believe that that has come to the Z8 yet. However, we do have pixel shift shooting, which is used for making things like higher resolution photos, uh, the higher dynamic range photos often as well is something that I've seen in other cameras that do this. This is a feature I use a lot in the S5 IIx. I used it in the Panasonic S5, and I used it in the OM1 as well. It's a really nice feature, especially on lower resolution cameras to get better detailed photos, but the Z8 and the Z9 are already high resolution cameras, so I'll be really curious to see the sort of uh, effects that come out of it. The only downside being that on the Z8, it is not in camera, as in, it will take the pixel shift shots, but in order to combine them, you have to use Nikon's software on your computer. So not quite as advanced as Panasonic and OM yet, but I expect them to develop it further going forwards. And uh, it's a really nice indication that they are starting to play around with some of these features because especially on the OM cameras, they have a lot of very interesting computational photography features like that, that I'd like to see on other cameras too. There was one other thing that I've noticed from skimming through the firmware notes so far. There are some new picture profiles for JPEGs on the Z8. I think these have come from the ZF as well. And they're a nice upgrade, primarily because two of them are monochrome profiles. And I find the Z9's monochrome profile very disappointing by comparison to say the S5 IIx. The S5 IIx's L dot monochrome profile is sublime and uh, once I used it, I realized that I couldn't really use the default Nikon one in quite the same way. It's very disappointing. And um, I just use the JPEG straight out of the camera on the Panasonic, but I have to tweak the black and white shots a lot from the Z9 to get similar sort of effects. But there are two new ones. There's a flat monochrome profile, uh, which has more sort of grays, I would imagine, you know, a wider dynamic range rather than just being very contrasty. And there is a deep tone monochrome, which apparently uh, has slightly darker tones in the range from shadows to mid tones, and then brighter tones in the upper bit. So I'm assuming higher contrast probably. And that's very interesting. I will look forward to trying those out if they come to the Z9 at some point. Um, I know this isn't for everybody, but I like being able to take nice JPEGs in camera as well as raw files. And I think that's a nice little feature to bring across in a firmware update, especially as it's seemingly just a color profile that they can add into any camera. I would expect to see that on probably all the Nikon cameras going forwards. There is a third one as well, which is called Rich Tone Portrait. Uh, apparently produces more vivid results than portrait while capturing details of the subject's complexion and avoiding loss of detail in highlights. I think I'll have to try that one to know what it does. But yeah, those are the ones that I've seen primarily that I find interesting. Go and check it out. I'll put a link uh, down below and up here, I guess, to the firmware update and uh, Nikon very helpfully release a supplementary manual 
every time they release a major firmware update. So on top of your original manual, they've got a new manual that just lists the changes. And I love that. It's a really nice way of uh, catching up on exactly what the changes are and not having to skim through a substantial manual for things like the Nikon Z8 in order to find those new features. So go and check them out. Let me know how you get on with this new firmware update. I'd be really curious to know your results. See you later.